found the cure for the zombie virus. Now I need to get it out there, but I'm trapped. All roads are closed. There's no way out. For this challenge, I have to reach four stations connected to the emergency broadcast system. Use the EVS to get my message out. This is Dr. Edward Etheridge, and I've come here. And then go to the rendezvous point. It's been a month since the incident, and no trace of the virus was left in my body. But the sets were changing, evolving. Day 30. I had to be on the move. It was time to set up a mobile workstation, an RV. This will be my new home. First things you get, gas. Siphon the bit of fuel from a few cars nearby. Then I hit the gas station. Found some more empty cans. Filled them to the top with gasoline. Left everything back home. And then... The power went off. Day 31. Got on my bike and went looking for an RV. They were growing in numbers. It was like swimming through an endless ocean of death. Nonetheless, I kept going. Non-stop. After a couple hours, I ended up in the parking lot. And that's where I found it. I pulled over next to it and realized this was no joke. The screeching and howling were calling more of them. A runner almost got me. They were evolving fast. I managed to land some hits, but it was in vain. Wasn't strong enough cornered with my back against the metal fence, then surrounded from all sides. Regardless, I made a run for it, pulled out the gas gun as fast as possible, got inside. They were closing in, tried to hold white the damn thing, banging on the window. Done. I stepped on the gas pedal as hard as I could, pushing and running over them. I made my exit. Once at home, I checked the van's condition. Could be worse. There were a few things to fix before hitting the road. After moving the nearby corpses, I started working on the front of the RV. Use some metal sheet to repair the hood. This will help protect the engine in case of collision. After that, I salvaged a windshield in pretty good condition from the car next door, followed by a quick wash. Change the light bulbs and finally repair the trunk, providing me with much more space for storage. The van was looking much better. Some things could have been improved, but my mechanic skills weren't good enough to do so. Now, time to move my workstation. I had to rearrange the interior. Little by little, I started to bring my equipment. But after the sun went down, they started coming. Out of nowhere, one after the other. From within the darkness, I tried to use the windows to make them trip and fall to the ground, but it was useless. Something was calling them here. The runners were the worst. When you least expected, they jumped on you. It was getting out of control. Made a run around the whole block. Jumped over the fence in hopes of losing them. Seemed to work. Went straight to bed. Five in the morning, I was awakened by that disgusting, sickening sound. Flesh being ripped apart. Bones being crushed. It was driving me insane. What I saw through that window shook me to my core. The bodies were attracting them, luring them. Killing them wasn't enough. Their death made things worse. I had to burn them down, set them on fire, incinerate that filth. I armed myself with everything I had on hand. After a deep breath, I slammed the door open. No, there were too many, too close. What if the house burned down? What if all was lost? I couldn't risk setting all of it on fire. Shooting would be a death sentence. I ran away, draw them around the block. I had to win just a little bit more time. Prepare the van and go away. That would be it. No signs of them. Resumed operations. Grab equipment, set it down. And that was it. I had to put this to an end. Couldn't keep running in circles. Not anymore. Skull after skull. Crushed every single one of them. Dragging their blood through the pavement. And so, after a long morning of hard work, the station was ready. It was a bloodbath. Before doing anything else, I set them on fire. Pulled every single corpse, one after the other, and finally burned the last of them to ashes. It was a cathartic release. Liberating. A new chapter. I no longer recognize the person I was before. Now, the most important thing, my purpose. The reason why I was still breathing. It was inside that case, the research, the samples, the cure. I had to get it out there. Day 33, final preparations. Filled the gas tank, brought everything important over to the van. Even fashioned myself a makeshift silencer. This was it. It sinked in. 
was probably never coming back again. Before leaving the city, I had one last stop, Army Issue Surplus. I felt alive. One, two, three, four, body after body, dropping like flies. Focus. Don't lose focus. Keep the distance, fall back and fire again. Calculate every move like a game of chess. Move after move, shot after shot. Always careful around the runners. That damn filth. Almost lost my balance. Got surrounded. There were too many. I was running out of ammo. I had to take a chance. I stormed right into the store. Was able to grab a couple of things before the whole entrance was overwhelmed. Pull back. Quickly. Found some ammo in the storeroom. Again, they broke through. Grabbed the shotgun just in time. Swiftly, I made my way out of the store. Parking lot was clear now. Cold. Went inside the RV. Drank some water. This was good. A shotgun. A hiking bag. Sleeping bag. Just imagine what more I could get in that place. I modified the hiking bag to be able to attach some useful things. The case, some water, and a flashlight. I was exhausted. Next morning, I had some breakfast. I needed to get back there. I couldn't resist. The place seemed quiet. It wasn't. I started blasting, again and again. They came from behind, barely escaped, and then... I got in the van. Even if I had the cure, even if I was immune, that wouldn't stop them from tearing my whole body apart. I couldn't risk humanity's future just for a damn store. It was time to go. I had to leave the city. I had no idea what lurked beyond. Maybe that was what truly scared me. The undead? I could see them from a mile away. But out there, that was the unknown. The journey began, street by street, avoiding wreckage, steering clear of the walkers. As I got further from home, the chaos was much more notable. The mess, the cry for help. Now, just debris. It was like a picture, a moment frozen in time. The moment all went to hell. The remnants of the old world. A shell from the past. All that effort. The military didn't stand a chance. What a nightmare. Felt so powerless. No one knew how big it was. And to be honest, I still didn't. I remember it like it was yesterday. I almost could hear it. The lockdown is a necessary precaution to control the situation. We have enough to handle as it is. Are you at work? I don't want to be alone. <laughs> I arrived at Westbound Station. All the doors were locked, so I climbed through a broken window. Carefully, I cleared the first floor. The control room was on the upper floor. The building was secure. The station had no power though. I needed to get it back up and running again. The RV was in critical condition, and I was not skilled enough to repair the engine. Only managed to repair the hood, part of it. Next morning, the search for the generator commenced. Had to take my chances. First, I checked the nearby sheds and warehouses. Unfortunately, with no luck, I kept going. But the undead were overwhelming. I couldn't lose now. I wouldn't let them. Against all odds, I would search every damn shed until I got that generator. Pushing non-stop. They wouldn't have me. I was part of something greater. The difference between me and them, I had a purpose. Failure wouldn't stop me, falling and rising again, persisting, no matter how hard it gets. For darkness to exist, there needs to be light. I will bring forth a new future, ignite the fire of life again. Fighting had a cost, a significant setback, but I would find a way. And so, the generator was functional. Lights were on. It was time to record the message. This is Dr. Edward Etheridge, and I found the cure. I repeat, I found the cure. If anybody hears this, send an air unit to the following coordinates. So many things crossed through my mind. Was anybody out there? I couldn't be the only one lucky to survive. If someone else was infected, I was the target. Should I leave the rest of my days here? Stay away from everything. No, I couldn't. I wouldn't give up like that. Next stop, mall draw. I didn't have the required tools to install a new tire. 
pushed through as far as I could, but there was nothing else to do. It was settled. With no tires and a dead engine, I had to leave the RV behind. Pulled over and went on. A few hundred meters ahead, I stumbled upon a couple of Zeds near a car. One of them was the owner. They were trying to replace one of the tires, it seemed. There were tools on the floor. The car's condition wasn't great, but definitely miles better than what I had. It even had some gas left. I installed the tire and drove right back to the RV. I wouldn't be able to fit everything, so I moved only the most essential things. That was the last night I slept in there. The next morning, I continued my journey. I had to press on through uncertainty and doubt, a hazy future. Hours later, I arrived at the second station, checked the building room by room. It was clear. The one next door had a walker banging against the window. I entered here and went inside. Fortune smiled. Small victory. With the second station now functional, there were just two more to go. Halfway. Halfway to changing history. Halfway to changing the future. After all, if I wasn't able to get this out of Knox County, was there even a cure? Did this even happen? Passing by dozens, hundreds, thousands of undead, made my way into Rosewood. The station was located just northwest, following a dirt road. No zombies inside this time. No generator either. I had to scout the town. I needed the station up and running. I started looking, dancing around the sets, searching sheds, garages, every single window, while at the same time not letting my guard down. A ceaseless chase cat and mouse. It was a game of fortitude, mind, patience. If you sleep up, you'll lose. They get ahead of you. You start panicking. You stop thinking properly. You make mistakes. You have to regain your posture and move on. You never know what is waiting behind the next window. But don't let it blind you. Plan. Map out your moves. Keep your ambition in line and your fear in place. Don't give up hope. See the path ahead of you. Prepare and execute. Don't hesitate. Move swiftly. Make your hits count and fall back. Back and forth. The horde never tires. The horde never sleeps. They are a never-ending force that will try to wear you out until you break. You have to use every tool at your disposal. If it's not today, turn back and try again tomorrow. They are mindless. Savages. You can think. Preserve your life. That's what truly matters. Reflect on what you've learned. Then, counterattack. Harder than before. A new strategy. Evolving. Be unpredictable. Be human. Learn from the past. Build your own future. This is how you survive. After setting up the station, something hit me. I was one step away from the end. Everything built up to this. The message would go out. I'd painted a red cross on my back. I doubt it. I considered dropping everything right there, but I couldn't. This was the price I had to pay. I wouldn't choose the easy way. Living in isolation the rest of my days. No, I needed this. If this was the way I was going out, then so be it. I was ready, no matter how hard it would get. I would settle on giving humanity another chance, no matter how this started. I knew I would end it. With the right approach and enough time, things end up in the right place. The message was out there. A beacon of hope, a tiny spark, something to hang on to. Only thing left to do was wait, wait for the consequences. I reminisced about all the events that led to this moment, wondered about what could happen, every possibility. What if no one came? What if this was my destiny? Existing until the end of my days in this living hell. Always on edge, always running. The horde never tires. The horde never sleeps. There were days where I felt lost, gone. Just a shell, isolated. Paranoid, but hope kept me going. The chance of finding someone else, the chance for a better future. And then it happened.
Skål. Drop it. Drop it now.